Welcome back to Let's Read Judge Dredd. And today's episode is Dear Annie Part 1. And our countdown in Acropolis is on 2. I'm guessing Dear Annie doesn't have but a Part 2 or 3. Alright, here we go. Apartment 2201, Dune Ronaldo Block. Confidential Hotline, Ask Annie, Holmes and Humes Magazine. Dear Annie, please help me. I think I'm going out of my mind. It's my wife, Zena. She's been acting strangely for a long time now. Just, But just lately, seem, things seem to have gotten so bad that I'm beginning to despair for both of us. Please, please do not print this letter on our problem on your problems page. If Zena finds out I told you about her, she'll kill me. You probably think I'm joking. I wish I was. But you don't know Zena. But perhaps I best start at the beginning. We used to have such a warm and loving relationship. Then one night, a few years ago, a shadow came into our lives. Oh, baby. Ding dong. It's nearly four o'clock. Who could that be? Uh, forget it. Now, where were we? Mm. I smell smoke. Can you smell smoke? Now you come to mint. They're shouting out in the quarter. What? If there's a fire, we better see. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. All right, all right, I'm coming. Greetings. I have come to judge you. The sentence is death. Chad! Oh, God! Leave her alone, damn you! You two... You two shall pay for your wickedness! No! There they are! Incendiaries! Rapid fire! It is time we must... It's time! We must go! Drock! Drock it! They poured it out again! She's still alive! Help her! Zena was in a coma for days in the block hospital. Even when she did come out of it, she was distant, cold, withdrawn as if she was only half alive. Well, she appears to have lost uh, the use of her right arm. Uh, though we can't... Though we can find nothing physically wrong with it, she complains continually, feeling cold. If only we knew more about the effects of contact with these creatures. Give it time. That's all I can suggest. Don't worry, darling. You're on the best. You're on the men now. Before long, Judge Death's Judge Death will seem like a bad memory. You're wrong, Chip. Judge Death isn't bad. He's good. You must understand. He he loves us. He came to purify us, to save us, not to hurt us. Huh? Oh, come on, Zine. She needs psychiatric help, that's said. In time, in time, I was allowed to bring her home. Twice a week, she saw the uh, shrink, through, though the consultations didn't seem to do any good. Each day, she grew more listless, more far away. I tried to give her my love, but she would turn away as if my touch had begun to repel her. 
You can imagine my torment, Annie, to lie with her each night, remembering the countless precious moments we'd shared, and see beside me a stranger, to watch her day by day slipping further away from me. Then one night I woke up and she wasn't there. Huh? Zena! Never! Never touch me again! Gee, Zena, I think I better call the shrink. Hey, you're using your right hand, you see that? That's progress, Zena! Put it down. There will be no more appointments with the shrink. You understand? You will do as I order. You will never touch me again. You will never again share my bed. That is for him alone. For, for who? What, what are we talking about? Who? The only one who is pure enough, good enough, my master, my love, judge death. So you see, Annie, when your wife throws you over for a walking corpse, you kind of know your marriage has hit the rock bottom. Little did I dream things could get worse, but then how could I know she would try to summon him here? Oh. Well, join us again next time for Dear Annie Part 2. Uh, until then, thanks for watching.